Hello, uh, my name is Matt Singer. I'm the arts and culture editor at Willamette Week, and my guest today is Bill Oakley. Um, people uh, who are you know, huge fans of The Simpsons know him as uh, a now sort of Portland-based uh, writer and showrunner who worked on, I think most people would agree, the golden years of, uh, of The Simpsons back in the uh, uh, mid-90s. Um, and he is now uh, has equal renown, I would think, as a uh, fast food blogger. Um, uh, Bill, thank you for being here today. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. Awesome. Well, let's just start. Tell me a little bit about how your life has changed, if at all, um, you know, since all this started uh, back in early March. Well, in terms of my work, it's not that different because um, I do, you know, most of my work is sitting at home. Uh, on the computer writing stuff for things that are done in Los Angeles for the most part. So in reality, um, my day-to-day -day life is fairly similar. Um, what hap The fun parts of my life though, meaning which I like to go to the grocery store, I like to go to restaurants, go to the gym, that has all dried up. Um, but in terms of like my actual day-to-day -day work, it's, it's pretty similar. And in fact, I would say that there's a lot more video conferencing. Like I think that people up until this, Everyone in Los Angeles was very skeptical that someone in Portland could work in TV, and now I'm doing it all the time. So uh, I think it has introduced the whole world of video conferencing to a whole bunch of skeptics. Um, what have you been doing to sort of fill in the time? You know, you mentioned that there uh, obviously were other elements of your life that have sort of uh, dried up or been put on hold. So, like, what have you been doing in kind of in terms of filling in that time? <laughs> um, I've been doing a lot more cooking um, and Instagram style stuff like you know um, I, I haven't this is the longest and longest period of my life that I have gone without having any fast food I mean I used to be having it when in that the height of my Instagram I was probably having it four or five times a week now I haven't had I, I had I had Qdoba which we can get into in a minute that's the only fast food I've had since um, this whole thing started uh, since my last video appeared which was I don't even remember now March or late February um, so that's uh, that's a big change. Um, so I'm doing a lot more cooking and that kind of stuff appears on my Instagram story almost every day. I'm actually eating, <laughs> I'm cooking a lot of huge dishes and eating almost all of them. So um, I I'm doing a lot more uh, home eating. <laughs> you mentioned that you went to Qdoba. That, you mean that you went there uh, kind of post, post pandemic? Yeah, they have a new thing. I mean, a lot of these places have new things where you can go um, and have contact free curbside delivery. And, uh, Qdoba has it, and I like that, and I thought I just wanted to get out, so I had that. Uh, it was pretty good. Um, I mean, it was no substitute for any actual <laughs> real dining, but it was that's the only even sort of – that's not even a fast food place. It's a fast, casual place. So, um, But that's pretty much the only food like that I've had since um, this all started. I've been doing, trying to do more ordering from local places, too, because as far as fast food places go, I'm still kind of worried that they're not – many of them are not giving their workers paid sick leave. Um, I really don't like that, <laughs> and um, I, I'm so I've been ordering a lot more from other local places like um, Burger Stevens. You may know has, has started having an Italian takeout thing, which is fantastic. I ordered that a few nights ago. I ordered from a catering company, um, which was like selling like catered food and ingredients. Uh, I ordered a whole bunch of beer from Berlick Brewery which delivered it and stuff like that. So um, I continue to do that type of thing as well. This transitions into kind of what I wanted to, uh, another thing I wanted to talk to you about, which was, uh, you know, the big fast food news uh, in Portland the last week was that there's apparently a Shake Shack, uh, the first Shake Shack in Oregon that's going to be opening uh, right. in downtown Portland at some point. Um, first of all, what's, what is your, does that excite you? Are you excited about Shake Shack? Are you a fan? Not really. Um, <laughs> I like, like, I the thing is I was a huge fan of Shake Shack like nine or 10 years ago when, um, you when they were hard to find. And like every single time I went to one, the burger was dynamite. Since then, I think they've expanded way too fast or they're just not training their, like the last five. In fact, I did a video about this last summer. The last five Shake Shack burgers I've had have been like, you know, real mediocre, like barely, barely, barely better than a Burger King burger. And so like. Let's just say this, the build, uh, the design for their Shake Shack building looks great and it's an incredible location. It would be amazing to go see a movie at the living room theaters 
eat at Shake Shack and go to Powell's. What a lovely outing that would be. Um, however, don't get your hopes up about the food quality at Shake Shack. You know, it could be great. It could be lousy. It's never going to be as good as 15 or 20 other burger places we have in town. I wish that that had become a giant outpost of hit the spot or Burger Stevens or one of those places with the ping pong table and the great location. But, you know, Shake Shack, like, Let's just say it does. It used to deserve the cult following that it has. I wouldn't say that it deserves it anymore. Um, I guess that that does open just an interesting point, though, about sort of doing what you've been been doing after once this is done. You know, you you like to talk about uh, fast food and sort of fast casual. Um, you know, and you and you and you go to a lot of chains and kind of review them. Does that does that maybe? And you like you said you've been trying to um, patronize you know local businesses more during the shutdown. When things reopen, I mean, does that does that maybe change at all how you kind of look at how you do the uh, do your blogging? Does that does that change anything? Well, I always do. I always eat a lot of local stuff. I love local stuff, and I love the burgers. And they're almost always uniformly better than any chain stuff, of course. Um, however, the videos that I make are for an audience of people who aren't mostly in Portland. Like, Port I only have ten percent of the viewers are in Portland, so um i try to make videos for people all over the country and generally the, always the most popular videos are things from large chains that people can get themselves um but on my instagram story which i update every day that's where i put all my local stuff and usually um it, it gets five or ten thousand views uh you know whenever i talk about whatever the latest thing is from a food cart pod or whatever so um i generally do that as well but it's on the, my instagram story rather than just the videos I was going to ask as a, you know, a writer for The Simpsons, which obviously, you know, I think is comfort food for so many people right now. Do you watch uh, like the seasons that you wrote for? Do you go back and revisit them that often? Yeah, once in a while when they're, I mean, like they, I'm so, I saw those episodes 250 times a piece when we were working on them. So they're, in, they're drilled into my head. And also, but I mean, that was 25 years ago. So I do record them like, I don't sit down, now that they're on Disney Plus, it's a whole different kettle of fish. Like, you know, it was actually kind of kind of hard to see Simpsons episodes for like the past 10 years. You had to record them, either have FXX and record them or go to simpsonsworld.com, which was the biggest boondoggle. Like, and you had to log in with your cable provider's password and you were forced to watch commercials as well. So like, that's why like, Nobody under 20 has seen any Simpsons episodes um, until, when, until now when it's on Disney Plus and they're much easier to watch. You know, so um, do I watch them once in a great while? Um, I would prefer to watch Futurama or something like that where <laughs> like, I haven't seen them quite so frequently. Do you have one episode either, you know, an episode of Simpsons that either you wrote or that was written outside, other than your, outside of your era, that's sort of like your, your comfort episode? Because there's definitely like, I, I could name like probably 10 of my favorites. Like, is there any one that you would return to? To sort of, uh, oh, yeah, you know, I would, back. my favorite ones have always been the ones from the third season, which is before I started working there. I think like the late second and early third season are like all the episodes are gold, which is when, uh, when Josh and I took over the show, we literally sat down and mapped out season three and, and just tried to copy it, you know, and just like, like there's one Tycho Bob episode, there's one itchy and scratchy episode, there's three Lisa episodes, and like we just literally you know sort of um retroactive retrofitted our, our thing onto that template so but uh, those are the episodes that i watch and they're all like ones from that era like flaming Moe's, um the burns selling the plant to the germans uh radio bart which is where bart falls down the well um all the way up to the middle of the fourth season and like those are the ones that i watch for entertainment because i didn't work on them so i'm not so intimately i don't have them drilled into my head. I don't know every single thing that's going to happen. And so like, those are the episodes I watch. And in fact, somebody just, I'm um, actually did an interview just this week about episodes. I'd recommend people with episodes that are not like really hyped that people um, should go back and revisit. And they were mostly those episodes. Um, what has this pandemic taught you about yourself has, you know, sort of having, some chains put around what you're able to do, you know, socially and in your daily life. Has it taught you anything about yourself that you didn't already know? You know, I have to say the only thing I can really say that's valuable in that regard is that the weather, we have been so lucky that the weather has been amazing. Like if the weather were like it is today, which is gloomy, gloomy, 
Had it been gloomy for the past five weeks, I would be going bananas. I wouldn't even be able to hold on a conversation, hold this conversation with you. But because we have had this unseasonably fantastic weather where it's been like 70 degrees and sunny, like that has that has lifted my mood during this otherwise gloomy time. And I have been like literally outside, like it's Fort Lauderdale out there. I've been literally outside in my shorts tanning for like a half an hour to an hour every afternoon that it's been like that. And we've had like 20 afternoons like that in the past month. So like, I mean, I would just say that like the weather, like if there's sunny weather really, really helps my outlook about everything, which is obviously weird because I live in Portland where it's not that sunny, but except this year has been the sunniest year in my recollection. And I've been here 11 years. Right.